Turning your commonly used documents into templates is a great way to save time every day at work. With a recent update, Google Docs has made it easier than ever to create templates from your documents and fill them out with dynamic data in seconds. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create and use variables in Google Docs. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we help our members get the most out of the software they use every day, like Google Docs, Airtable, HubSpot, and a whole lot more. If you'd like to learn more about X-Ray and our services, check out our website at xray.tech. To see more automation and productivity tips every week, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new way to save time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create variables in Google Docs. Then I'll show you how you can use variables to quickly fill in the blanks in a template. Aspiring productivity nerds should also stick around to the end of the video to see how you can automatically fill in templates with automation providers like Zapier and Make. There's a lot to cover here, so let's get started. To begin using variables in Google Docs, start by opening up a doc. Note that you'll only be able to access variables if you're using a workspace account for a company or a school. Variables are not yet available for individual accounts. If you are on an individual account and want to add variables to your docs, you can skip to a later chapter in this video to check out an alternative method with Zapier or Make. Once you have your doc open, there are two ways to create a variable. First, you can add a word enclosed in square brackets. As soon as you type the close bracket, Google Docs will prompt you to hit tab to insert a new variable. When you do, you'll see this variables panel open on the right and your new variable will be added to the list. Alternatively, you could create a variable by typing the at symbol anywhere in your doc. This will pull up a list of smart chips and building blocks that you can add to your doc. The smart chips and building block menus are essentially Google's answer to Notion's versatile list of blocks. However, Notion doesn't have any support yet for a variable feature. You'll find variables under the smart chips category. When you select it, you'll have the choice to either create a new variable or insert an existing one if you have any. I'll insert the same example variable that I already created. When you first add a variable to your doc, this panel on the right will say that it has no value. That just means that to start with, your variable has a title but no content assigned to it. You can either click on any instance of your variable or on the no value text to the right hand panel to assign a value. For instance, I'll give this example variable a value of automation. Then I'll click outside the variable to save it. Instantly, every instance of your variable will be updated with its new value. You can also update this value whenever you want. As you can see from this quick demo, variables are going to be a great tool for filling out templates. You can just fill in each unique piece of information once to populate your entire document, and updating any variable is just as easy. So with all that in mind, let's see what a complete template with variables looks like. I've created this proposal template with several key variables, like client name, start date, project manager, project fee, and a few more. I've also added this document as a template in our company's gallery. I'll make a copy of this template to create a proposal for TestCo. Note that when you create a copy of a Google Doc with variables, all of the variables will still be functional. Also, any changes that you make to the copy will not affect the original. This also applies if you simply make a copy of the document directly without using the template feature. With my newly created doc, all of the variables just display their labels, client name, project manager, etc. You can click on each variable in the doc to fill them out but we'd recommend opening up the variables panel on the right to make things easy. Just select any variable, then click on this icon to open up the panel. Then you can go through all the variables in one spot and fill them out in a few moments. Just be sure to press enter or click outside the variable after filling in a value to save your entry. Once you're finished, you can close the variable panel and all those outlines around the variables will disappear. Your doc will be all set to share or export as a PDF. And if you need to update any of these variables, just click on any instance of the variable, change the value, and press enter. Instantly, every instance will be updated to the same value. So if you accidentally misspelled your project manager's name in your first draft, you can easily update them all at once. And you don't need to worry about leaving one of the Dwights as a Dwicked. This new variables feature is a great way to quickly fill out a template, but some of you out there might wanna take things a step further. You might want to create a document automatically with a no-code provider like Zapier or Make. 
That way, you could also send the data for your document to other apps at the same time, like Slack or Google Drive. Additionally, if you are not part of a Google Workspace, creating variables in your docs with Zapier or Make is a great alternative. If you'd like to learn more about these automation providers, then check out our beginner's guide to Zapier, updated for 2024, to give you a look at the software's latest features. You can also explore our beginner's guide to Make if you're interested in learning to automate on a more affordable and technical platform. Now let's create some variables in Google Docs that we can fill in automatically with Zapier or Make. Here, I've got the same proposal template, but I've replaced all of the Google Docs variables with variable syntax that Zapier and Make will recognize. To create Zapier and Make variables within a Google Doc, just enclose the text in two pairs of curly brackets. Zapier won't recognize any variables that use spaces, hyphens, or most special characters. However, underscores are fine. In Make, you can do whatever you want, as long as the variable is enclosed in two sets of curly brackets. Spaces, underscores, hyphens, upside down question marks, ampersands, octothorps, and any other special characters are all fine. To keep things simple and compatible with both, we'd recommend using camel case, like this. Now let's build an automation in Zapier to fill in these variables. I'll also show you a bit of how it works in Make, but conceptually, it's a very similar process in both apps. To start, you'll need a trigger that gathers data to fill in your variables. One easy way to do that is with a form and a spreadsheet, like this form we've created in Airtable and its associated table. There's a question for each variable, and each submission is stored in a table. I'll fill in the form once and create some test data. And I'll check off this generate proposal box to send it to the generate proposal view. Now back in Zapier, I'll choose Airtable as my trigger and select new record as the event. Then I'll sign into my Airtable account. To make sure this automation only runs for verified records, I'll limit it to the Generate Proposals view, which only includes records that have been checked. Finally, we can give the trigger a test to pull in some test data. And there's that record that we just checked off. Great. Continue and add a new step to the Zap. Select Google Docs as the app and choose Create Document from Template as the event. Sign into your Google Workspace account, if you haven't already, to authorize Zapier. Now you can configure the action. To start, you need to identify the doc that should be used as a template and copied whenever the automation runs. You can search for the document by name if you'd like, but we'd recommend using the document's ID instead. Copy the doc's ID from the URL bar. It's the string of characters after the slash D slash. Select custom for the field and paste the ID in. Next, you can give the document a name. We'd recommend using some dynamic data, so the name isn't always the same every time the automation runs. I'll pull in the client name from Airtable. Next, you can identify the folder where the new document will be created. Once again, I'd recommend selecting custom and pasting the ID. Drive folder IDs begin after slash folders slash. We'll keep sharing preferences and unused fields preference to their defaults. Then, you should see all of the variables that Zapier found in your Google Doc. They have the same name that they do in Google, except you won't see the curly brackets here. So now we'll just map each variable with appropriate data. Note that each variable will only appear once here, even if it appears multiple times in your template doc. If any of your variables are missing, check your template doc to make sure that you followed the right syntax. Two sets of curly brackets, no spaces, no hyphens, and no special characters except for underscores. Or, to keep things simple and easy, just use camel case. Once you've mapped every field, give the step a test. Clicking test will immediately generate a new document with all of the variables filled out. Zapier says the test was successful, but let's check out the doc itself just to make sure. I'll search within the test results for the alternate link. That's the doc's main URL in Drive. As for why it's called alternate, the world may never know. And when I open it up, the doc looks great. Every variable has been replaced. In Make, you'll follow a very similar process. 
add a trigger that collects data, like our Airtable trigger that we've already set up. Then add an action, search for Google Docs, and select create a document from a template. To make things easy, we'd recommend setting this first choice of create a document from a template to by dropdown. Then once you fill in the doc ID, you'll see all of your variables listed here. You can fill them out with dynamic data, just like we did in Zapier. In either automation provider, you can also add additional actions to do more with the data. You could also add a Slack step to send a message alerting your team of this new proposal, sharing the alternate link and asking for their review. You could also use this data to create Slack channels, Google Drive folders, and much, much more. With thousands of apps supported, the possibilities are endless. With inline Google Docs variables, you're limited to just making and editing variables within the document itself. On the flip side, using an app like Zapier or Make will take a little bit more time to set up, and it won't let you update variables in a doc that you've already made. Ultimately, the choice is yours. Both methods have their pros and cons. Whether you use Google's native features or an automation provider to fill in your variables, they're both great ways to generate templated documents quickly and consistently. Don't waste your time entering the same data over and over again in Google Docs. Try using the new variables feature today to instantly create documents from a template and update them whenever you want. And if you're on an individual Google account and don't yet have access to variables, you can always create them with Zapier or Make instead. If you enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. And if you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources Board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. An X-Ray's workflow design course will show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to seamlessly integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Go to course.xray.tech to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.